Come on, girl. There we go. Woo. Well, it's the crack of like 9.20 right now. Back at the park. Gonna <clears throat> walk out here. I get a fair amount of questions every year, actually, as to if there's a good spots to walk out for ice fishing and spots to shore fish in the summer. I would describe it as a little bit tricky, low percentage, uh, big gamble, because if you're going to walk out to a spot, it's going to be a fair amount of walking no matter how you look at it, um, and you're going to hope that they're there. So it can be done. I'm about to do it today. Will I get skunked? Maybe. <laughs> uh, will it be any good? It might be. Uh, I got quite a bit of open water experience out here in the boat. So picking spots it's a lot easier to do something like that as compared to like you know somebody that's just winging it out here walking out ice fishing for the first time fishing out here but anyways let's see how it goes Look that one, Jason. I didn't even know there was one down there. That's crazy. I just reeling up to try to attract him, and there was one there. Okay, so I'm below the fish coming back down to me and there we go come on I got a one ounce Northland airplane jig on that I custom tied I cut the bucktail off tied my own on the stuff they uh, produce is pretty good but um, sometimes I like doing my own thing fish I think now watch I'm gonna try to drop back in its face nope did not eat it coming back down to it Assuming those are both lake trout, I am currently 0 for 2. This one seems pretty disinterested. I don't show up all of a sudden there. There we go. Woo! Had to just barely pull it away from him. Oh man. That sucks. Someone drop back. Get back, get back, get back. Come on. That sucks. It just, it just barely latched onto the thing. I was kind of moving it real slowly away from the fish. See if it'll eat again. Sometimes it'll do that.
there's one. She's coming in. There's a couple of them down there. This is a good sign. Come on. A couple of them down there. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. They are being tough. Of course, I just had one off. Can't well, had the camera off when I got one. Brand new bait. Little fish. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's fun. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's fun though. First. Uh, about my second drop with this bait and this one ate it on the drop which I keep talking about and they haven't been doing today they've been really finicky this thing is really tiny <laughs> but I'll take it future fork pack giant Way high. It's probably a lake or way up there. Yep, there we go. Way high. You're right under the ice here. I'm gonna, I could look down the hole and see it probably. This me down really hot. Oh man, it was hot. It's it's a hot fish. I should be able to get her. Come on. Got her. Let my drag kind of loose from that last one, but I got her. That was fun. This might be a bigger fish. They usually don't pull too hard at first, and then they kind of realize they're hooked. Oh, that was sick. Real high fish. That was fun. A little bit better fish. I don't think she's really woke up yet. That's fun. Simcoe 75 it is. I don't know. Let's see where I'm in my hole. Man. I think it's a nice one, but it's a... Uh, you know, not huge, but a nice one, but she just uh, hanging out. She's hanging out right under the ice. Nice if she took off, almost. Usually they kind of got a <laughs> thing where they love running all the way back down to the bottom. This thing's just fighting up really high. Kind of running horizontally. I don't think it's a salmon. Trouble hooks on this bait. I don't want to hook it on the edge of the ice either. Yeah, it's definitely uh, fighting kind of different. It's fighting really high. Come on, girl.
Try to tail her. this place that is a sick fish ate that Simcoe 75 heavyweight second fish I ever landed on the bait Woo! that is a stud laker that's a beauty oh my gosh I love this place Okay, gotta get her on hooked. Look at that girl. It's really dark. Might actually be a male. Look at those fins, they're like kites. See you later, girl. Woo! Went from a dink to a tank. That thing was fighting, it was kind of crazy because a lot of times they'll go ripping right back to the bottom. That thing was just fighting horizontally all over the place, like within 30 foot of the hole. It was crazy. Uh, very interesting fight. Got him on the Machini Lure Works Simcoe 75 heavyweight. This, uh, Rod happens to be a, uh, what are they called? Elliot, uh, 46 inch Siskoid or whatever. Um, like the heavy 46 inch. Um, yeah, got a mix of these. Got picked up one of these last year at a little ice show thing in Majigger at Shields. Met Jason Mitchell there and I met, uh, one of the Elliott brothers, like way back in the day at Sportsman's Warehouse, I think he was working for a Portland Fishing Line or something, he gave me fly casting lessons, one of the nicest guys ever. Um, super guy, I kind of felt like I had to buy one of his rods. Um, I got a lot of the Thorn Brothers rods and he is the Thorn, one of the Thorn Brothers. Uh, just that, you know, they sold it years back. Hard to go wrong with an Elliott rod or a Thorn Brothers rod. <laughs> Asking, how's that for timing? Shack just about killed me, but it was calm. The winds are supposed to pick up apparently from that that direction. In the meantime, let's see what we got down here. I'm gonna have to put a strap on that in a sec. This is annoying. Another decent fish. It's always an adventure at the park. It's always got to be something. Catching big fish was easy, everybody would do it. Oh man, she is burning. Mm. Oh, buddy. It's fairly top drag. She is strong. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that is fun. It's another nice, nice fish. Um today I man, I'm not the uh, I haven't seen any Cisco. When the Cisco are around, I think the fish are a lot more amped up. 
But you know, I'd say generally speaking, middle of the day, they're actually usually feeding harder. Um, and we're into that window, so they must be looking anyways. And thankfully it found my bait. You know, I think uh, sunrise and sunset can be good times to fish. But, uh, you know, sometimes I, I wouldn't say they're necessarily like as frenzied up as much of the time. In fact, a lot of times they're just kind of hanging out and you can kind of, you don't give them the chase as much at sunrise and sunset sometimes. Sometimes you just kind of trigger them near the bottom. You know, a lot of times they're just kind of hanging out. And uh, you get them when they're hanging out, but they're pretty predictable, like hanging out on the sweet spot. So if you drill over like the spot on the spot, a lot of times there's fish just laying right there. And you can trigger, trigger them into eating. You know, and sometimes they're active at sunrise and sunset through the ice, but you know, midday is almost better, especially probably when it's cloudy like this. shelter's blowing in on me. I'll anchor that side down once I get her in. But yeah, it uh, you know sometimes when they're active they'll just come right on in and chase it and eat it almost every time. Um, but like I said there's like little to no bait around so they're kind of tempted to just sulk on in and you gotta trigger them. Thankfully the last couple have got triggered to eat. And uh, <laughs> it went from a, a dink to a real nice one. Well, that last one, probably over 15 pounds. I mean, a lot of people brag about, you know, trying to get like a 40 incher, but I mean, weight, that's not a, you know, it wasn't like a 40 inch or anything like that, but weight wise, man, that was, that was a pretty serious fish. That last one I had there, it was definitely over 15. And, uh, The, the, the bigger fish I see on, on peck tend to be about three foot long. And uh, weight wise, it just all depends how much, uh, how much belly they're carrying. Then here's the again, there we go. Slightly annoying, but hey. <laughs> Thankfully it's a nice fish, so it's a, uh, <laughs> the battle's taking a hot minute. <laughs> In the meantime, my hub's about to blow over on me. Tuck it out of the way. On the Simco 75 heavyweight again. Got about. 16 inches of ice that I'm on right now. The uh, weather warmed up a little bit in recent history. It was actually kind of sleeting a little bit on me today. That's part of the reason I put the shack up was just to keep the uh, cameras dry. Um, but about 16 inches of ice. For the most part, ice conditions are pretty good for tech standards. Uh, you know, always be aware of gas pockets, current conditions can change quick. But conditions have been pretty good. And there. Pretty good. Well, I can get a hold of her. Actually, just come up face first here. Come on, girl. There we go. Oh, man. I hate when they have hole like that. That's, you're good at getting off like that. Come on, girl. There we go. Woo! Another Fort Pack stud. On the Simcoe 75 heavyweight. I'm gonna get her off. Get her back down and get another one. A lot of times it comes through on windows, like little little pack so there's probably others around they didn't leave while I was fighting her so it actually uh it pays to get down there nice and quick and actually if your buddy's got one you don't necessarily want to like <laughs> drop it I mean sometimes you can keep fishing for a little bit if he doesn't care a whole lot 
because um, you might be able to double up while he's catching one. So, anyways, beautiful Fort Peck Laker. Going back in. And these are all like, you know, definitely over 10 pounds. Like, I mean, this is definitely over 10, if not 12 or 13. Gorgeous animal, over 30 inches long. There she goes. Woo! Time for me to tie that hub down, but might as well drop down first. Just, just go ahead. Just got another one. It's not really quite ready yet, but got another one on here. <laughs> Didn't have the camera ready. I was trying to reset everything and. We got a, got a little cute one here. There we go. Okay, girl. <laughs> I gotta get you off to get back down there quick because there's probably another one. Speaking of. Gotta start this thing up. Okay, multitasking, dropping down while I'm unhooking this thing. Cute one. Come on, girl. Fun size. They can see it from a long ways away, so they know it's around. Might be a nice one. Ah! Got him. There we go. Got him on the secondary rod. Might be a nice one. Hasn't started really ripping yet. That was with the... Uh, I was using a machine we were work smelt head with a, a three and a half inch easy shiner, small little paddle tail. I know they're coming in and eating now. I got this one, <laughs> I got a single hole over here, it was kind of my backup hole. I got a bigger, made a bigger hole there. Um, this one would be a little, a little trickier to pull out. <clears throat> The beauty, little three and a half inch paddle tail. Get rid of the Laker hook. Mm. 
USB cut. You see right there. Woo! Another beauty. Fort Peck special. Get it back. Give her. Give you one more look. Ready? This is another beauty. There we go. There we go. I was about to say, uh, <laughs> the midday update was that uh, stuff was getting slow. Um, we might be getting back into another window here. fun stuff. That was actually, <laughs> I just switched back to that uh, Machine Lure Works Simcoe Heavyweight. A lot of it has more to do with timing than anything, but <laughs> uh, the bait doesn't hurt. They like it, let's put it that way. This one's going all the way back to the bottom. Most of the time they like that, but that big one earlier, man, that thing is fighting right under the ice. This one's fighting a little bit more normal. It's kind of scary when they're fighting under the ice, though, because they get all those hard angles trying to, trying to fight them through an ice hole. It's actually a little easier if they run straight down. Man. Whew. I got, uh... I'm not sold on the line 100% uh, by any means, but I'm currently using 15 pound P-Line CXX. Er, no, 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 CX, it's a big difference. CXX would be really stiff and coily. Uh, trying to ice fish with it, but um, this is like a copolymer. It's the P-Line CX Premium, I think it's called. Um, I might be one of the only people or the uh, I'm probably the only person on the lake fishing uh, copolymer for Lakers right now. Everybody fishes braid pretty much, but I don't know. I like it. And you can just let it rip. Open your spool. She rips to the bottom. Um, I got no problem. I mean, you saw me earlier today. I did uh, hook up with one that I lost, but I mean, that's going to happen no matter what line you're using. Um, so if I was fishing really deep water, like, you know, I, mean, I think for Lakers this is relatively shallow i mean like lake superior and stuff i mean i don't know they're fishing 130 150 180 foot of water or something you know it might be a different scenario but uh for this application i i really like copolymer a lot i mean you can <laughs> this thing's <laughs> strong look Talk about it. Dude, this thing is strong. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's a, I think there's another one out there I can see. Still have yet to mark like any bait. Um but when we're catching fish. You know, I should add in the summer. I, 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 I've always, I've never used like straight copolymer or anything. Uh, I use braid to leader in the summer for these Lakers. Um, you know, and I'll fish them at similar depths. And then as the summer progresses, I'll fish them a lot deeper. But you know, the braid peels off a lot more clean in the summer. If you're in a heated shack like I am right now, you can get it to peel off pretty good. 
But especially if it's kind of chilly and your line's freezing up, man, this copolymer sheds the water so much better. Um, I just think it's a lot more manageable. You can just do things you can't quite do with braid. And as far as hook setting power, I mean, I don't think it's a huge situation at these depths. Starting to get her kind of closer. <laughs> it's fun stuff. <laughs> Uh, going right back to the bottom. <laughs> so this is that uh, Elliott 46 inch heavy fast. It's got a reel seat on it, which kind of go either way, but uh, for Lakers, I kind of like it. Uh, and big pike. I mean, big thing uh, with the electrical tape. It, you know, you kind of feel it flexing quite a bit. Now, does it really make a a difference in terms of like, you know, your reel's not going to fall off if it's taped on, but it kind of feels a little funny. Like, you know, if, if you have one that's just uh, straight taped to the cork or something, you definitely feel it flexing decent when you hook into some nice fish. <laughs> this is oh, this is fun. Like I said, I, I walked out today. This is I, I literally plopped holes right here, and you know, if there was just nothing, I would have moved. But you know, like I said, big thing walking out, man. You're you're a little handicapped. I mean, if it's good, you're fine, and if it's not, you're not fine. I mean, there's a uh, you know. You know, sometimes areas of the lake will get hot, um, you know, and it's it's kind of tough because you might walk to the next next door structure and maybe get on them there, but, you know, I'm thankful I'm getting on them right now. Talk about a fight. You know, when it comes to picking location, you know, I've said it before, but kind of that 50 to 80 or 50 to 90 foot depths is, is pretty common. Um, typically, I'd say you want a little bit of a complex, not necessarily just an isolated structure. Um, there's a few things I look for, which I'm not going to go into great detail, but like I said, if you find a complex, and then you find what you think is like the apex of that complex, um, you know, so you have a complex of structures, like a, a fair amount of area that they can roam, that can hold, you know, a number of fish. And then you pick the key spot on that complex. And usually those complexes, like I said, are going to top out around 50 to 90 foot of water and be adjacent to really deep water. That's about all there is to it, to be honest. Um, you know, uh, now, the truth is, sometimes people, uh, get high expectations out here and don't realize that it's a lot of work and I put in a lot of time in open water to be able to get on spots through the ice like this. It's a real nice fish. You know, it's, I have quite a bit of experience and, you know, uh, your first time out here may not, may not go quite this easy. A lot of people get skunked their first few times out here and wonder why everybody's posting videos of like 50 fish days and But once you put your time in, this is a wild, wild place to fish, I'll tell you that. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. is a stud. Oh my gosh. Dude. 
<laughs> I love this lake for a lot of reasons, but... Woo! Favorite lake on Earth. I've fished a lot of places. And, uh... Dude, this is a special place. These are special animals. Let these big fish go. Respect the resource. Woo! Have a good time out there. And be very safe. This is, uh... It can be very sketchy ice. This is not necessary. This is not a place you come to learn how to ice fish. Ice conditions right now. We got about 16 inches of ice. Most of the snow is melted. Um, kind of slushy on top right now, actually. Woo! Talk about an animal, folks. This is the place where Canadians come to go lake trout fishing. Now Canada's got some giants, but. I've legit talked to Canadians that come down to Fort Peck. They're glad the border's open too. Look at that beast. Gotta get her back here. Whew. Give her a breather. Here we go, folks. Look at that beast. See you later, girl. Whew. Just when I thought it was starting to calm down, I had a tank come through. Oh my goodness. Oh. Average first fish I caught today was a dink. Started out the day catching like I mean nothing. Uh, the early morning or the earlier I mean I was I was out at the crack of like eight twenty or nine or something. Uh, not exactly like first light, but you know had a lot of chasers. I think a lot of smaller fish and kind of bizarre because uh. Honestly, it's definitely usually better to be around bait, but uh, you know, they get fired up. But the ones that are coming in, I'm getting them to trigger and uh, getting a few Fort Peck monsters. Sick, couple of them down there. Woo! Oh my gosh, I love this place. Lakers, smallies, walleyes, everything. I think I'm taking another run. <laughs> That's a nice one, too. <laughs> Get this out of the way. Oh, there's a couple of them down there. No, oh, here it's close. It's a cute one. There we go, folks. There's a medium sized one for a change. For just a sec. Okay. Ice in my players. Okay. There she is. 
And there she goes. Turn a, turn a power down there. Tying up there, but didn't have my uh, sonar cam going, but that's fine. That was on a ripping wrap. Starting to come up head first. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> she just doused my camera. Oh, uh, like I said, kind of a normal nice one. Oh, they're all nice. And back. Didn't have the camera rolling, but I just got another one. She's screaming. <laughs> oh, that's silly. <laughs> Get this line out of the way. Head shaking back and forth. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. I think I got her it's a little goofy. <laughs> oh my god. So cool watching her roll around down there. Oh, baby. Right under the ice. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> Trying to get all the fish like this. Just making laps. Oh my goodness. Oh. I think I got it lassoed a little bit. Yeah, she's lassoed pretty good. All ro gator rolled in the line. Oh, okay, girl. Woo. Come on. Give me that tail. There we go. There we go, baby. That's a beauty. Okay. She got herself seriously lassoed. Okay. Okay, girl. Let's get this bait. Let's get this bait and get you unwrapped. Whew. It's a good time. Okay. Wrapped like crazy. There we go. Okay. Beautiful girl. Whew. Beautiful Fort Pack Laker. Kind of your <laughs> normal size Fort Pack Laker. Super fun fight. Let me get her back. See you later, girl.